I am sure that this video is going to find you when you need it the most. You bug hunter are running into trouble and I'm sure of it. That's why you're watching this video. You try, you try, you have technical knowledge, you did port swigger labs, you did uh, Sahara dry hack me, you did hack the book, all the nice things you learned, you, you even did my courses, but you're still failing at some things. And I see it every day, and it's also a failure on my end for not emphasizing this hardly enough. And that's why I've built my latest course. I've built that course to show you what the real world is. If you go to rattrack.dxsrat.com and you're telling me I am only getting errors, there's something wrong with you. Because you're not using the application correctly. If you go to ratpackpark.dxsrat.com and you're having trouble finding the like what to test really because there's no cross-site scripting, there's no SQL injection, what am I going to test here? Come on dude. Well, I'll tell you what you're going to test here. You're going to test functional bugs. There's role-based access control. You can make your own roles. These are all functional applications which I'm talking about. I have never spoken a word to entry-level people about going for broad scope. In fact, I've discouraged it. And here's why. I'll tell you exactly why. Because broad scope, you couldn't catch a bug if it's in front of your face, dear hacker. And don't get me wrong, but it's the truth, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting here listening to me ramble. So... How are you going to recognize a bug when it's in front of you on a broad scope target? That seems really weird and it doesn't seem something that can actually be true. So like the, the thing is, I, I feel like a lot of you guys want to hack before you can hack. Let's define hacking for a moment. Hacking is using applications or systems or whatever in ways that they're not intended to be used, right? And at its very core, you're abusing a mechanic, you're abusing a system because you want to know how does this work? And that's what hacking is. You want to figure out how things work. You can't do that on a broad scope target. And if you're telling me that the main application doesn't have any scope, oh, go fuck yourself, dude. Main applications are massive. Business to business applications are massive. And yes, I'm only talking about broken access control. I'm only talking about idle. I'm only talking about functional bugs because I don't want you to go broad scope. Other people, they don't tell you this because they show you really cool scripts, right? And the broad scope this and blah, 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 there, but they don't tell you that it's not for beginners. I, I wouldn't hack that wave, dude. Like, especially if you're getting started, get started with something simple. A normal business to business application. Not too simple, not a stupid web shop or whatever, but I have those in my labs as well. If you want to go to them, by the way, labs.expert.com. So I have those in my labs, right? And I have cross-site scripting in my labs and I have SQL injection in my labs, but it's the minority and it's still on functional targets. I'm teaching you these things on functional targets because yes, broken access control pays. It's on the OWASP top 10 twice. It's on the OWASP API, API top 10 three times. Those types of bugs pay consistently. There's people who need to consistently find mediums. That's your way, business to business. And you're going to go, like for example, right? There's this application that I've built, the red track that I've talked about before, which you make a, like an item and you wanna move that item between two locations. You can test if there's broken access control 
on getting that item. You can test if there's idors between tenants. You can even test if there's idors within one application if that's applicable. In this case, it's not. But there's so much that you could test for. And you're telling me that you have nothing to test for? Automate me that. That's a different story. Now we're talking authorize. Now we're talking real shit. That's real hacking in my opinion. Not running a script and gathering the information from it. And ladies and gentlemen, if you do broad scope, do it well. At the very least, do it well. What is my goal when I'm making my broad scope scripts? Because with my group, I'm making a broad scope script on Jenkins. And I'm making it in modules, which I can call from a pipeline. Why is that? Because I have these methodologies, workflows, all of these different things, which I sometimes need to combine and sometimes it's something that takes long, sometimes something which you can do fast, something that I can launch multiple times, but I need to have like flexibility in that. And there's workflow automators out there and you might see me struggle for two hours with Jenkins just to get a stupid domain scan running. But now I have a domain scan with four tools that automatically deduplicates every list checks which are online, that's feedback every 20 or 30 seconds, however I set it up, just because I do it right. I want to have something which I put google.com in, and I want to have a proper list of subdomains. Not that I have to run, well, different tools on that. Those need to be run. I need to be able to run these four tools in parallel. That's why, Julius, I'm sorry, I still fucking own you in Jenkins, but my pipelines run in parallel, his run sequentially, which takes longer. Mine running in parallel, I can also launch multiple jobs of it and use less components if I want to. I can set up different pipelines. So I want to put in google.com, I want to get out my list. And why do I sometimes do broad scope? Because I have a goal in mind. And what's my goal? Is to be able to manually investigate these URLs. Yes, manually. So I'm going to take a screenshotting tool and run it on everything. I'm going to take a, like, Ferox Buster, I think is what this guy recommended in my community, Black Hacks. A really fucking awesome guy. Ferox Buster is now running on that shit. That's the way I like it. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's go. Broad scope isn't supposed to be I'm just running a tool that I found on the internet. Because even in the simplest form of it, right? In the simplest form of it, and that's been about two years since you guys have seen me dance and sing. Here you go, free present. But you're taking these scripts and you need to think about error handling, logging, deduplication. You need to think about output formats. There's all these different things that you need to think about. If I run a one run tool, do I want to be able to provide extra flags to it? Yes, in my case I do. Because why? That makes it so that I can set up the where it runs nmap, for example, and I can make one pipeline that is a very thorough scan that has all of these extra flags, and I can have one that does nearly nothing and is very basic with the same block. I don't need to do anything extra. And that's the power. I want to have those screenshots because then I want to manually go and see I want to have those directory bustings because I want to find things that are out of the ordinary. And how do you guys think I'm going to find things that are out of the ordinary? I need to know what the ordinary is. So if I find a site from google.com that I don't recognize, like sites.google.com, I didn't even know that existed, I'll start playing with it. And I found this really cool cross-site scripting because you can put script alert slash script in it that is not possible, but there's this cross-site scripting which you can still do, but it's in a sandbox and I like I'll figure something out.
And then there's like, the, I'll tell you guys this. This is a freebie. This is a giveaway. There's HTML injection and ChatGPT and just the prompt. You just have to figure it out. I'm trying to upgrade it. I'm trying to upgrade it. So hunters hunt, hack it. You just need to be able to put that thing to work to generate a few payloads for you. But these types of things, these are aimed attacks. I am doing something which I know. I know what ChatGPT is, so I can work with its APIs. And you, with all due respect, don't look at API documentation. How do I authenticate to an API? Um, how like all of these different things that come into play, and then then can I teach you these tricks? Only then can I teach you these really cool tricks. Because when it comes to, like, for example, uh, cross-site scripting, right? I can teach you some cool tricks. I can teach you filter bypasses, WAF filter bypasses. But there's no point in it. If you can find me an injection point, and if you're just spamming attack vectors that you found online, you're already letting me win for free because i'm investigating what i'm doing what the output is all of these things and i'm not having ChatGPT hack for me or whatever but i am having ChatGPT create my jenkins pipelines my jenkins scripts i have made jenkins https with ChatGPT because i can just look up the third bot uh, instructions all of these things are super easy with ai so ai can be a help in things that you already understand, which you are probably doing wrong in attacking things that you don't understand in methods that you don't understand properly. Because I'm pretty sure that after this video, a lot of you are going to be like, holy crap, I never thought of it that way. I hope I opened your eyes a little bit because these are just a few of the avenues which you can explore, which make it really useful to know your application. Broken access control. You need to know what roles are possible. You need to know what these roles limitations are. These are all things you can find in documentation, for example. Look for documentation. Probably not doing that. Probably not reading the documentation. I know we're fucking guys. I know we throw that documentation on the floor the moment that it hits our hands. But guys, for once, read the documentation. It'll help you out so immensely. Understand things. I've talked to kids that hacked fucking Google. Multiple. I'm going to do another interview soon. There's one interview up on the channel. I'm going to link it if I can remember to link it. But these kids, they all have the same idea. They understand things. And then they're going to attack those things. Now, once again, do I think you should avoid broad scope forever? No, absolutely not. But do be mindful of what you're doing. Hope that helps, amazing hackers. Somebody had that question. So I did it for you. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget, the Endless community is so much more than just a community. So we've rebranded it to our Hackers Essentials Toolkit community. This is a community, Discord community, with weekly giveaways of Hack the Box and Try Hack Me. And about, uh, like, I don't know, 200 people are there, but about five participators, 10 participated. It's always the same, guys. <laughs> so you have that, you have exclusive merch, you have access to all of my courses, current ones, future ones, the previous ones, all of my life lessons, all of my certifications. It's a one-time investment for a lifetime of learning. Thank you so much, amazing hackers. I'll see you in the next one. My name's been Uncle Red, the best singer ever. Oh, baby, uh...